Well, take your Bibles with me, and I want to show you something, starting in uh, 2 Corinthians 4. What I'm going to give you is uh, just the beginning of, of a little way to share the gospel in the next nine minutes with maybe your friends that, that uh, don't know the Lord yet. Because uh, a Christian, first of all, is a person, in, and I'm just reading a, a standard how to witness to your Catholic neighbor track. You can find them anywhere. But I want you to actually go through this. Sometimes we read stuff and we don't study. But look at 2 Corinthians 4, 2. It says, but we, this is a Christian, have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. But we manifest ourselves, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So what is the Bible to us? It is the ultimate authority. Uh, you all know this verse, uh, 2 Timothy, if you want to turn over there, 3.16. It says this, all scripture, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture, not not all church tradition, but all scripture, the holy writings, are given by inspiration of God. They are profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. Okay, that's what a Christian is. Now, what, what does the Roman Catholic believe? They believe that the church has authority over scriptures. I'll read, this is what the Catechism says. Paragraph 119. The manner of interpreting the scriptures is ultimately subject to the judgment of the church, which exercises the divinely conferred commission and ministry of watching over and interpreting the word of God. You know what that is? That effectively robs normal people of this book. You know why? It's too dangerous. Now, the Catholic Church has a little bit changed their tack. Now they're promoting Bible studies. In fact, I just went up to Harvard and... 31st or wherever the Roman Catholic bookstore is, and I walked in, and, and I was just acting real interested, and the man says, you know, you're so interested. He says, you need this track, how, how to be sure you're saved. I said, thank you. He said, that'll be 25 cents. I said, well, thank you. I paid him a quarter for it. We give him away, but he was, you know, he had a whole box of me he was selling it. He's supposed to at the store. But he said, you should read that. And I did. You know what it says? It says, you can be sure you're saved if you have been baptized and if you've been confirmed, and if you are faithful in your attendance to Mass at least once a year, and if you are, did you catch that? And so when I read my Bible, if I was trying to be saved, I would say, that doesn't agree. You know what they would say? The church has been divinely commissioned to interpret the Word of God. Trust us. You see the difference between a Christian and a Roman Catholic? A Christian says, I have the anointing from God. I can understand this book. God has opened my eyes. He's turned me from darkness to light. And I, formerly when I was lost, it was foolishness, 1 Corinthians 2.14. But now that I'm born again, it's not foolish anymore. I understand this book. Well, what about salvation itself? Turn to uh, Romans 4.5, back to the left there in your Bibles. And I just want to do a few contrasts. Because, honestly, any truly seeking Roman Catholic, if you will, will not... Frontally attack them. I mean, you don't have to tell them about Rad Bertus and tell them it's an abomination. It's all true. But I would start with what, what is the basis of our salvation? And, and look at, at Romans 4 5 with me. This is what it says in Romans 4 and verse 5. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. It's the whole faith chapter about Abraham and justification by faith. So a Christian believes that they have been justified by faith because justification once and for all is a declaration from God. That's in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 30. However, to the man who does not work but trusts God, God justifies the wicked and his faith as credited as righteousness. Now that's what the Bible says. That's just plain Bible. A Roman Catholic, paragraph 1446 of the Catechism, has to be justified repeatedly by sacraments and works because he loses the grace of justification each time a mortal sin is committed. The sacrament of penance offers a new possibility to convert and to recover the grace of justification, which even reading it is confusing. Basically, what it says is you're hooked. That's what it means. You've got to come in for your insulin. You've got to jab yourself with the needle several times a day and keep getting your insulin or you're going to have an attack and die. You see? You see what? Jesus says, a new heart I'll give you and a new spirit, and you'll once and for all be eternally saved. And they say, no, nope, you've got to come in, you've got to keep taking your injections, and every time you miss an injection, you go back to start, and you've got to start over again. At the very heart, Romanism, 
is exactly diametric, exactly in opposition to the heart of the gospel. How does regeneration occur? We have time, three minutes for just two more. Look at 1 Corinthians 12, 13 with me at the work of regeneration. It says this, and this is good doctrine for us. And by the way, all these verses are already in yellow in my Bible. I hope they are in yours. And I would encourage you as this series goes on, you might want to uh, do something that I do. In the back of my Bible, I, I have these little lists. And, and I put down like Roman Catholicism. And I'll, I'll just jot off some, some verses so that, you know, if, if I'm sitting next to someone or talking to my neighbor and have my Bible, at least I know where to start. And I have my Bible marked. And I would encourage you to somehow, you know, grab a pen and bring it and, and, and study this together. But look at verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 12. It says, For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and all are made to drink into one Spirit. So we believe that we were regenerated at the baptism of the Spirit when we were born again. And at that moment we were baptized by the Spirit of God into the body of Christ. And from the beginning... And, and keep turning to the right to 2 Thessalonians, because this is, this is a tremendous verse. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And by the way, this is Paul talking to a very new church, and he talked about very deep stuff. And 2 Thessalonians 2.13 explains regeneration. And it says, But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, 2 Thessalonians 2.13, because God, from the beginning, chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. We believe the Spirit sanctifies. God initiates and we respond in salvation. God is the initiator. So we believe that God from the beginning chose us to be saved by the sanctifying work of the Spirit and we became one who believes and loves the truth. That's what a born-again Christian is. That's what we are. The book of life is a listing of those who are going to be worshipers of God. They won't worship anything else. The beast, the Antichrist, none of that. They won't worship false worship but they will worship God in the Spirit? Well, the book of life also is a group of people who have received a love for the truth. You know, it says earlier in, in First Thessal- or Second Thessalonians, it says they did not receive the love of the truth. Uh, and, and that's what happens to lost people. But what do Catholics believe? Paragraph 694 of their confession says this, a Roman Catholic believes Baptism of water imparts divine life. Baptism of water imparts divine life. And the water of baptism signifies our birth into divine life. What does it say? God has chosen you from the beginning through the sanctification of the Spirit and through belief of the truth. Can a baby be sanctified by the Spirit? No. They can be from the womb set apart to God like Jeremiah the prophet was, but they can't be saved. They have to believe the truth themselves. And no autism can materialize the work of the Spirit. Well, last verse, favorite one. Look at Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. What, what a, aren't you glad for Ephesians 2, 8 and 9? For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, and you can take that both ways. The faith is not of ourselves, and the gift is not of ourselves, and the grace is not of ourselves. You can just, it, none of it is of ourselves. It's not of works, is the bottom line, verse 9, lest anyone would ever have a reason to say to God, Ha-ha, you glad I made it? Ha-ha. Right? I, I, I did it all, didn't I? See, that's the idea of religion. God, aren't you glad how much I did? But that's not the God of grace. He says, no, my grace is sufficient. There's nothing you can do. So a born-again Christian is saved by the unmerited grace of God. It is by grace we've been saved. It is by faith in the work of Christ. It's not something we've done that's right or good. It is totally a gift that we receive. It's not by works so that no one can boast. Uh, just a few weeks ago when I was uh, up speaking to the young people in northern Michigan, uh, I had all these inner city kids. It was very interesting, and I remember scaring them to death. I walked out to the front and stuck my pen right into the face of one of them. I said, I want to give you this gift. Here you go. You can have it. What should you do? And the guy's eyes got real big. He says, take it. I says, yep. And he took it, and I said, that will be $10. Scared him to death. I said, that's religion. You pay your way as you go. But God says he gives you the gift, and all you say is thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. That's a true Christian. What is Roman Catholicism? A Roman Catholic is saved by meriting the graces needed for salvation. 
We can merit for ourselves and for others the grace needed for the attainment of eternal life. And that's not my words. That's paragraph 2010, 2010 of their catechism. And they literally believe if they are a good practicing Roman Catholic that they can merit grace for themselves and attain eternal life by getting infused grace from God dispensed from the tree.